Welcome back to News 46. Tomorrow, the California Highway Patrol will again join forces with the Nevada Highway Patrol, Henderson Police Department, and the Las Vegas Metro Police Department to target the highly traveled Interstate 15 corridor between California and Las Vegas. It is estimated that on a daily basis, an average of 45,000 vehicles enter Nevada on the Interstate 15 corridor from California. That equates to an average in excess of 16 million vehicles entering every year. The mission of the agencies is ensuring the safety of the motoring public during the start of this Labor Day weekend. The stretch of Interstate 15 is the busiest in the country and will see increased holiday traffic. With the collaborative efforts of the agencies, we've managed to reduce the number of traffic collisions in this area through enforcement and education. The agencies will focus their efforts on speed violations, the move over law, distracted driving, commercial enforcement, and seat belt enforcement. In addition to enforcement, officers and troopers will be providing assistance to disabled motorists on the freeway. The California Highway Patrol will include the use of their fixed winged aircraft that measure speed from the air. The NHP will be having extra cars on the road looking for impaired drivers through September 12th. Please remember, never drive impaired or distracted. A local man stopped by the station with a piece of mail that he received at his home. The letter is an attempt to scam the individual out of his hard-earned money. Another local has received some fraudulent mail claiming to have won a prize. This one says that the recipient has won $1,327,000. All they need to do is submit $12.99 to them and they could claim their prize. The recipient of this mail took it to the post office who confirmed that once again this is a fraudulent piece of mail and they are doing an investigation. If you receive any such notices, whether it be by telephone or by mail, the one thing you just need to remember is if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. If anyone ever asks you to submit any money to them, it's an alert that you are being scammed. Contact the local Nye County Sheriff's Office for more information on mail and telephone fraud. You can reach them at 775-751-7000. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. A dinner is being held for our local first responders. Here is Ryan Muccio and Cassandra Selback with all the details. We are very excited. Um, Valley Electric Association is going to be partnering with uh, Prompt Valley Rotary to put together an inaugural banquet for the first responders on September 11th. That's our local first responders? It sure is. So we're going to get everybody involved for that evening. We're going to serve them dinner. Um, there will be awards that will be given. Um, and selected by each department themselves. It's kind of a conjunction of events for the whole day. So Rotary will gather in the morning um, at the first responder reflection area that we built at the Calvada Eye. We'll have a dedication uh, ceremony as well as a, a memor small memorial for 9-11, um, which is kind of an entire day to honor the first responders. We're very excited about that. Um, this will be the very first event that we're going to be holding at the New Valley Conference Center. Can the public come? Absolutely, yes. So we're, we have tickets available for the public. Um, they're $60, and it's a chicken steak and chocolate cake dinner. Um, so we're really excited about that. That was mainly Cassandra's idea. Um, but we're very excited. We do want the public to come and support these first responders. Um, naturally, we're going to have first responders and their family there. Um, we're actually donating a certain amount of tickets to every single department so that they can send a group of first responders and their families. Uh, but we do want the public here honoring those people who are being honored. We have 100 tickets available at $60 each, and all of the funds and proceeds from that are going to go directly to the first responder fund, um, which is going to go to support um, the purchasing of identified um, items that each department needs. Basically, Rotary has constructed a wish list um, based on those needs, and that money is going to go to that. So Valley Electric is actually going to be um, providing all the food and then the facility. That way, 100% of those proceeds can go to that program. So we actually set up the fund after we built the first responder reflection area because we're selling bricks, uh, commemorative bricks. So um, we designed a special fund for that. And we don't have the wish list items um, yet from the individual departments. They're gathering those right now. 
Uh, we're working with the sheriff and the fire chief and the emergency management uh, to get those items that they need, and we're going to purchase those directly and donate them right to them. So any money received from the brick sales or from this dinner or any other fundraiser we hold uh, with First Responders of Mine will go to that fund. Rotary paid for the First Responder Memorial. Uh, we're not looking to replenish those funds, so any, any proceeds go directly to that fund and 100% of it will be spent on uh, equipment that the first responders need. Deanne O'Donnell brings us this week's News Across Nevada. I'm Deanne O'Donnell. Here's your News Across Nevada. The Air Force has applied to the Bureau of Land Management to continue the use of its site at the Nevada Test Site and Training Range and to expand it by about 300,000 acres of additional public land. The Air Force published a Federal Register notice on August 25th stating that it would conduct the environmental impact statement on both renewing the existing public land withdrawal, which covers approximately 2.9 million acres, and the withdrawal and reservation for military use of another 301,507 acres of public land to expand the existing range. The existing land withdrawal expires in 2021. During the environmental impact statement, the Air Force will consider existing uses of the expansion area. For instance, of the 301,507 additional acres, the Air Force is seeking approximately 266,000 acres, which are managed for desert bighorn sheep by the U.S. Fish Fish and Wildlife Service as part of the Desert National Wildlife Refuge. The Nevada Test Site and Training Range already includes much of this refuge's land. The Air Force expansion would also overlap a designated energy transmission corridor known as the 368 Energy Corridor in two locations in Beatty and Las Vegas. The Nevada National Security Site has launched a brand new website today, nnss.gov, hailing the programs and people that perform important national security work in defense of our nation. The .gov website is the first for the Nevada National Security Site and is similar to the websites featured at other government organizations, such as the National Laboratories. nnss.gov replaces the previous nvenergy.gov website. This new site features all the latest news as well as information on on the Nevada National Security Site programs and facilities. The Bureau of Land Management has awarded almost $30 million in wild, wildfire prevention projects in Lake Tahoe Basin, Carson Range, and Carson City. The funding was generated through the sale of public lands around Las Vegas under authority of the Southern Nevada Public Lands Management Act and awarded to the BLM partners based on thorough project proposals. The Division of Public and Behavioral Health recently received notification of a four-year award for assistant outpatient treatment. This is a service delivery model directed towards individuals with serious mental illness who are in need of supervision to safely maintain and live in their communities. This funding will allow this program to be expanded to other service areas in Nevada. To find out more regarding criteria and how to get involved, give them a call, 775-684-3211. More Americans die from drug overdoses than from car crashes in the United States, according to new statistics from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. This week, Nevada Governor Brian Sandoval and 500 health and policy experts are working out methods for addressing the opioid abuse crisis in Nevada at a two-day summit held at the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. The goal is to prevent abuse in the community, but also to boost recovery efforts. The governor's summit will focus on tackling, tackling opioid crisis in Nevada from prevention to treatment. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. That's your news across Nevada. Stay tuned to News 46. After this break, we'll tell you how you can help provide a loving abode to some aging four-legged friends.